Case Customer Creations is sponsored by Bits and Bits. Use the code JBates to save 10% off your next router bit or CNC bit purchase at bitsbits.com. Most of my shop time recently has shifted from project-based time to task-based time. Just I have a bunch of tasks to get done, and individually they don't add up to much, but together it equals fun shop time. So that's what this video is, just a bunch of tasks. First up, a sheet of melamine on the CNC machine. And this is three quarter inch melamine. I'm going to test one of these bits once again. This is a three eighths of an inch compression chip breaker from Bits and Bits. And with a chip breaker of this size, I'm much more able to do a full depth pass uh, to cut more quickly. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm testing out a full depth cut. This is three quarters of an inch deep. It's a three eighths of an inch diameter bit. It's moving at 300 inches per minute. And this is the part where you, you, you insert the Tim Allen, Tim the Tool Man, Taylor grunt because more power and awesomeness. It's just really, really cool be, to be able to cut through a full sheet of material, three quarters of an inch thick, and a single pass. And man, this it, it handled, handled it just fine. Of course, I am using tabs here. I don't have a vac table, so I am using... I believe it's three-eighths of an inch high, or maybe it's half inch high, half inch wide tabs. Uh, pretty large tabs. I've, I've got to flush trim them anyway, so the tabs will hold the pieces in place uh, because I have no vac table. And as you, as you can see, it's <laughs> this is really cool. It's a nice, crisp, clean cut, no dust packed in the groove, and uh, yeah, just just really, really happy with the way that this bit performs. The cut itself is for a couple signs from my neighbor. My neighbor asked for a very budget sign, inexpensive sign for Celebration Village. It's a program that she's heading up in Tupelo, Mississippi. Uh, so that's that's the large section here is a big Celebration Village sign. And then I had some extra space, so why not just cut a couple extras, some smaller ones for her? Uh, so that's what this is, just a very, very budget sign. Before switching over to the V carving part of the sign and actually cutting the details of the sign, I wanted to make a couple tests to see how well I could dye the interior letters of the sign black for an added contrast, but just so you could see it a little bit better from a distance. And I've got some dye here, a couple different size brushes, and basically no matter what, I am not steady enough to keep the, the ink in the sign only. Now I know there's other materials that you can use like multi-layered materials with the different colors and whatnot to reveal a color down below. Um, that's out of the question. This is a strictly a budget sign and I'm helping out, not charging anything, just materials only. So I wanted to see how I could do this and yeah, not, not a good idea. Melamine is a little bit porous. So anything that gets out on top of the surface of the melamine, it just stains no matter how you wipe it up, water, uh, what else was I using? Water and then um, alcohol, some isopropyl alcohol. It just did not did not clean up well at all. So ink is out of the question. We're just going to go ahead and just cut it as a, a, a normal V-carve. I've been running CNC machines for quite a while and it's still fascinating to me every single time I make a V-carve like this because if you think about it, all computer software is it's just ones and zeros and people have taken the time to convert ones and zeros into this process where I can write out some text, change the font, change the size, set up a toolpath to tell the machine what to do, send it to the machine, tell the machine to run, and it spits out something that's just so perfect. I, I, I mean, it's, it's fascinating to me, right? You, you can argue about CNC technology all you want. This is fascinating to me. I, I love it. It's really, really, really cool. Anyway, V-carving is done. It worked just as it was intended to work. These two bits right here have been such a treat to work with as of late. So the one on the right we just talked about, it's a 3 of inch compression. It's doing the job just, just fine. I love this bit. The one on the left though, this is a 90 degree V-bit, astro-coated from Bits and Bits. I believe it's a white side bit to begin with, but they've astro-coated it and they're a distributor of white side bits. Uh, this one, I've been using this exact V-carving bit for a few years now for all of my V-carving work. And I've engraved dozens of epoxy tables for a local friend of mine. All the stuff that I've been working on personally, uh, signs like this through melamine, through ash, through epoxy, through uh, uh, paper stone, which is another really, really dense product. And this is still sharp. 
uh, I'm, I'm so impressed with this bit. I have another one of these still in the, uh, what's it called, the, the wax packaging that they they dip them in before they ship them. And it's been that way for over a year now, and I've yet to open it because this one is still going strong. So if you're interested in these two, I'll have links in the description. Uh, check them out. My friends at Bits and Bits sell these. And you can use my uh, discount code to save yourself 10%. Um, it's not an affiliate link. It's just a coupon code for all of you. So check it out if you're interested. Two massive, massive thumbs up with these two bits. And now for a third bit in the CNC machine, my previous most used bit, which is just a uh, two flute spiral down cut end mill. And that's simply to just clean up the extra material that the uh, uh, V-bit did not cut with the flat bottom specified on the tool path. And after that's all cut out, now I can cut the tabs. And this is the, the downside of not having a vac table is you have to use tabs to hold everything together uh, so it doesn't shift when it's cut free. Uh, no big deal. It's just another process though. So you have to first cut them out uh, with, I use an oscillator, battery oscillating tool, and then uh, flush trim the tabs, which I'll do in a little bit. But this is where I'm shifting gears because I'm so scatterbrained and trying to help out my wife here and there and do what I'm doing over there and yada yada yada. So now it's over to the bandsaw to resaw some of these charcuterie boards. A lot of people mentioned in a previous video that these were just too thick. I, I kind of liked them at first. Well, I did like them at first. And then once everyone pointed out that they're too thick, once my wife said that these boards are too thick, I was like, okay, let's resaw them. I resaw them and then yeah, they're, they're just so much better at around three quarters of an inch thickness. So all that means is we now have twice as much material stock, which will keep my wife occupied with her laser engraving business and allow me to focus on my stuff without making a bunch of blanks for her. Back over to the melamine. And if you've never worked with this stuff, be careful handling it around its cut edges. These edges will give you a, a paper cut. I know it's melamine, it's not paper, but it'll, it'll cut your fingers very, very easily. So be careful, careful around the sharp edges. I'm using a flush trim bit in a palm router to cut the tabs off. That's again an extra step, uh, both to the big sign as well as the small signs. Then I'm switching over to my favorite router bit to use, just the most satisfying router bit, and that is a one eighth of an inch roundover. I am such a big fan of this bit. It it provides how, how do you say this? It, it kind of gives it a a, a real finished and refined feel to all the edges. You know, you're not really changing the shape and changing the look of it. You're simply knocking off that sharp, harsh edge, and you're doing so in a very uniform manner. It's not like using sandpaper where you can be somewhat uniform by knocking off the edges, but this it just, I don't know, it just looks elegant and, 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 and sharp without being sharp, if that makes sense. As I said, melamine edges are very brittle, so I'm trying to reduce the amount of times flipping this back and forth over and over again. So uh, I only rounded over the back side so that I can lay out for these, these, they're not braces, these, I guess they're just mounting blocks that I'll put on the back side. Just some square pieces of pine that I'll glue on the back. And the point of these is to allow a place to put an eye screw so they can hang this above the stage. So first up, I need to drill some holes for the eye screws and then actually put the eye screws in place. Every time I put these in place, I always reach for a clamp. The bar on a clamp is, is typically the best thing that I've found to just give yourself a little bit of leverage to install these. And then they can be glued into place on the back side of the sign. Now, a full sheet of melamine is about, I think it's about 95 pounds. And with all the material that I've cut off, let's just say the sign weighs 70 pounds. Uh, with the additional 2x4s and, and metal, maybe it weighs 75 pounds. I think the glue bond here is going to be plenty strong enough to hold that weight. However, uh, once it is dry, I do want to come back and add a couple screws just for reinforcement. Uh, but yeah, just weigh them down with a bunch of heavy stuff. Uh, sometimes uh, weight is the best clamp and let that sit overnight. But before finishing for that day, back to helping my wife out with all of her laser engraver business stuff. She made a bunch of earrings. I guess I guess those are popular or whatever. Uh, so I have photography experience. So yay, I get voluntold to do the photography for the website. And I don't want to sound like I'm complaining. I actually enjoy this change of pace working with uh, working with her business behind the scenes. It's 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 kind of fun. 
<laughs> it's a lot of fun actually. The next day the glue is dry and I'm very, very selectively finding a couple locations, just one location on either side of each one of the screw eyes to pre-drill a hole and add a screw. I don't think the screws are 100% necessary, but maybe they're going to add a little bit of reassurance for some, some sheer strength there. Um, I don't know. I, it just made me feel better putting the screws. I honestly think the glue is plenty strong enough. That's a really long glue bond uh, to hold the weight. I just, I just felt better adding the screws. And here you can get a good idea of how large this sign is and, and how easy it is to see even without dyeing the inside black. I actually kind of like this vibe here. It kind of gives it that whitewashed sanded vibe that a lot of furniture is going to, you know, or has gone to. Uh, so it, it, it kind of fits the, the, the crafty theme of this Celebration Village anyway. So I think actually not dyeing it black was kind of a blessing in disguise. Uh, but anyway, the, the stuff on the back is done so I can lay it on its back and then do the final round over on the top edges. Here's my one of my only complaints working with melamine. It, it machines wonderfully. It uh, looks pretty good for a lot of applications. It's relatively inexpensive, all things considered, but I have so many of these offcuts, especially from CNC work, that are just random sizes that really aren't good for much of anything. And the, the one sizes that kind of are good for stuff, I've already got so many of them on hand. So I find myself just bandsawing the rest into the trash can to go to a landfill, which is, that kind of sucks, you know? I don't want to waste all of this material but what do you do with it right it's not like it's not like hardwoods where you can put them in the fire pit or a smoker and enjoy them after the fact <laughs> uh, here it's just it's just landfill we are such a such a filthy species and finally a really fun way to end the video some of you may remember this saw right this is the grizzly g0555 la nv uh, anniversary bandsaw i think that's what it is uh, this is a bandsaw, the exact bandsaw that I purchased in 2013. It was my first real bandsaw. Prior to that, 2000 and 2009, 2010, something like that, I bought a Skill 9-inch bandsaw from Lowe's and had it for a couple days before I took it back because I thought it sucked, but really it was probably just the bad blade that was on it. Uh, so this is my first real bandsaw that I bought years ago. Sold it to a friend named uh, Ben. He's the guy who we did the contractor trailer for. And then Ben sold it to a mutual friend, Bill. And Bill is the guy in a couple of my videos where we did a farm table. And then last week I helped him out making a second farm table off camera. And um, it, it's now back in my shop. This is so cool. It's gone full circle. It's seen better days. Uh, honestly, the, I think the biggest problem is, is it hasn't seen enough days. Uh, it's just been sitting and collecting dust. Not the good dust, collecting rust, that type of a thing. The bearings are shot. Uh, the blades obviously are rusted beyond use and uh, other than that the, like the wheels are in good shape the motor is in good condition the table has got a lot of rust on it but no big deal you sand that off uh, I'm really really excited to get this bandsaw back so I've ordered some parts uh, took inventory of what I need and now I'm going to convert it back to its original state a viewer of mine sent me the riser block for this years ago and I no longer need this saw for resawing. I'm going to dedicate my Laguna saw to resawing and dedicate this one to curves. So I'm taking the riser block off and I want to pay it forward. So if anybody out there has a bandsaw that the riser block can fit and you would like the riser block, yes you're going to have to buy all new, all new blades because it changes the blade length. Uh, let me know. The first person who does, I'll box this up, box this up. I'll pay it forward and ship it to you for free. And there you go, you'll have a riser block for your bandsaw. So anyway, cool way to end the video. Uh, very productive past couple of days, weeks, whatever it's been <laughs> in my shop. Uh, life is so chaotic right now, it's hard for me to have a, have a real concept of time. Uh, but, but that's great. So anyway, you guys take care, have a great day, and I'll talk to you in the next video.